Hi, Source Creator. It's Eliana. I have a few questions today. The first question is, is the Galactic Federation of Worlds real? What is the Galactic Federation of Worlds? What is this body or governance? What is the system? Eliana. The Galactic Federation of Worlds is a type of governance system. It is a military force as well. This type of institution, it has been an institution for millennium. It is designed to facilitate protection of planetary systems, solar systems, galaxies, to prevent utter destruction on different worlds, to make sure planets are not an annihilated by aggressive species that are of a negative persuasion, like reptilians, greys, and others who seek to gather complete domination, whether openly with confronting the beings with armadas or behind the scenes, manipulating governments, governmental body systems, councils, federations, so the Galactic Federation of Worlds is a governing body, a governing structure, and a military force comprised of many different beings from many different planets who seek to have order, structure, and organization. However, the Galactic Federation of Worlds has become so big with members, it now takes too long to make executive decisions on which planets to cover and save, which worlds to go to to provide protection, it has stretched itself too thin. So it is taking too long to decide in council meetings, in federation agreements, what is important, what is lesser importance, what is more importance, what is lesser value, what is more value what to protect first, what to protect second. They gather in meetings, both physical and holographic meetings, to discuss and discuss these matters and to vote on these matters. Where to go first, what to do first, second, third, what are the priorities? It takes too long. They have way too many enemies, way too many decisions to make. They are stretched thin, although they are powerful, they are not the only councils, not, not the only federations to do the work that they do. There are many others that do this similar type of work of universal protection. They are not the only ones, and they are not the biggest, and they are not the most important. They are a big portion of the power structure in the Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy of what they term as protectors of sentient beings, and they do follow the order of non-interference. Unless you're being attacked or almost annihilated, they will not interfere with your internal civilizational structure and your planetary issues that are amongst your own humankind or your own beings. So there is not just humans in the galaxies. It's not just a human template of beings. There are many different extraterrestrials. But this particular Galactic Federation of Worlds will not interfere with your own civilizations, with your own internal struggles and matters that you need to deal with and figure out as, a, as an evolving civilization or civilizations living on the same planet. The Galactic Federation of Worlds has many ships. They have their own armadas. They are advanced civilizations of many different beings who came together seeking peace, wanting peace, on agreements on wanting peace and creating peace as best as they can. They do have a lot of advanced technology for protection and for consolidation of their resources together with the various civilizations and extraterrestrials that are members of the Galactic Federation of Worlds. So they are in existence, they are legitimate, but they do not count on emissaries to speak for them and pass messages 
on news media, television, and as such, those people have a somewhat grandiose view of themselves, a viewpoint. They think of themselves as more. So whoever calls themselves emissaries, guardians, representatives of the Galactic Federation of Worlds, they are merely choosing titles. They are merely seeking attention. They are merely wanting to be the new mouthpieces in the New Age communities. Titles are not what is important for the Galactic Federation of Worlds. They do not seek official emissaries, representatives, or guardians. Those are human concepts as humans filter that through. If the Galactic Federation of Worlds gives them attention, gives them information, gives them guidance, gives them teaching wisdom, that is for their own spiritual growth. Not to pass themselves on as titled emissaries, guardians, representatives. Those are merely titles. And I sense what is on your mind. Do you have another question about titles, names? Yes, Source Creator. I would like to know what Ashtar is. This Ashtar, is this a name? Is this a title? Ashtar, just the word Ashtar, or the word Ashtar Sharon, because there's one called Ashtar Sharon as well. So is the name Ashtar or Ashtar Sharon, is that a real name? Is that a real person? What is this? Eliana, Ashtar in itself can be any name that anyone can name themselves if they connect to the protector energy. There is the Ashtar Galactic Command, which is its own governance system, its own military force on both Jupiter and the moon of Ganymede and Io. So Ashtar Galactic Command has bases on Jupiter in the cloud cities they have their own floating bases, their own military, and their own governments, governance systems on Jupiter, Ganymede, and Io. And they often might work with the Galactic Federation of Worlds on certain mutual protectorate governance systems of protecting the galaxies from incursions of reptilians, dark insectoid beings, greys, and other regressives and negatives of species. Sometimes they have common ground and common neutralities that they may work on as projects. But again, Ashtar is just a energetic frequency. Anyone can call themselves Ashtar, Sharon, or just Ashtar. They are connecting to a protectorate energy frequency and if they think of themselves as that, then they embody that energy. But it is not one specific name that you would call yourself. Ashtar is a protectorate force, and it's a huge force. It is a very powerful military force. That is Ashtar. Sharon, that is a sort of rank and a sort of titular title of level one, two, three, four, five, six protectorates. You could say Ashtar Sharan one, two, three. It is a command name. It is a name of command. It is not an individual name of a being called Ashtar Sharan, just like Ashtar itself is not one name. It is a military force title in a sense. So Ashtar Sharan can be one, two, three, and four. Again, it is a military title. Sharan, the word Sharan itself, is an adjunct of an assigned military ranking force. Ashtar itself is the organization. Ashtar Sharan is the military title assignment. Think of in your armies, lieutenant, sergeant, commander, general, Stuff like that. That is what Ashtar Sharan 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 
all the way to 20-something means. That is all it means. It's a military rank system. So Ashtar Sharan is a military rank. It's like a filing system in the military. That is the best metaphor we can provide you as an example with this. Again, it's not one given name to somebody. It's not somebody's name. It is the energy that they're attracted to and what they feel, a connection to that energy, the military force in this case if somebody calls themselves Ashtar Sharan. And if anybody asks if the, if the Ashtar Galactic Command is real, yes, it is real. Ashtar is again a force. It is a military organization, a military institution. Ashtar in itself, an Ashtar Galactic Command, is the wider name given to that institution of military forces protecting this galaxy. Primarily, they're mostly responsible for the Milky Way and somewhat for the Andromeda Galaxy as well. So that is what Ashtar Galactic Command stands for. Ashtar, Sharon, and just Ashtar itself. These are military colloquials. They are representing military types, military code names, military insignias, ranks, secret mission files, and levels of military governance. It is not one being embodying a present lifetime or a past lifetime calling themselves Ashtar Sharan. That is not what that means. It is a military rank. Both Ashtar and Ashtar Sharan. And people may connect to the earthly adaptations of Ashtar as a blonde man or the woman Athena as names, but those are just code names. They're not the real names of beings that are called Ashtar or Ashtar Sharan. They are military code names, Ashtar and Athena. That is not the real names of people or beings. Those are military code names. To answer your thought question, if this is what you're curious about, Yes, I was curious about this. Um, why would somebody call themselves Ashtar or Athena, meeting blonde people who claim to be Ashtar and Athena? So what I gather you're saying, these are military code names for Nordics or Pleiadians, the blonde ones that say they're part of Ashtar, part of the Athena forces. Yes, that is exactly what we mean. Their code names, their military code names for Ashtar agents, Ashtar Galactic Command or Ashtar Sharan, code names for agents, not actual names of people, because that's not what these codes stand for. Source Creator is the name or the word Ashtar or Ashtar Sharan. Is this a Earth based? CIA PSYOPs agenda, why would that have come up in the 70s, in the 1970s, as um, code names or names in the first place? Ileana, as we mentioned before, Ashtar and Ashtar Sharan are code names, military names that actually exist in the universe as military forces as military conglomerates in the galactic sense in this universe. Ashtar Galactic Command, Command Sequences, Command Sources, and Galactic Federation of Worlds is associated with that organization. So it is, in a sense, a real force. Ashtar and Ashtar Sharan, their governance of military ranking levels. For your understanding. So it is not a complete PSYOP CIA agenda. The CIA became aware of this military ranking filing system of governance in this universe. They became aware of this military force called Ashtar Galactic Command. And like anything else, they've twisted galactic truths and galactic 
history. And it became as a misunderstanding of military governance and what the CIA twisted it as. But there is a form of truth that this is a military ranking of Ashtar and Ashtar Sharan. Not a person's name, but a military rank name. Different levels of military ranking. The CIA understands what ranks are. So if people read the urban myth of what the CIA spread around and misinterpreted what they said and they believed what they wanted to believe, all the better for the CIA that there is a man named Ashtar or Ashtar Sharan running around rescuing people. All the better because it creates an urban myth and a legend to distract from what the real extraterrestrials are doing and what is really happening galactically. It is a distraction, an urban myth legend that the CIA used for its own purposes as a distractionary tactic as anything else that they do. So again, do not get confused with the words Ashtar and Ashtar Sharan. Those are not names. There are military ranking filing systems of rank by title, like sergeant, like sergeant major, general, and vice versa. Sergeant general in your earth militaries. That is what it is connected to if you want to talk rank and levels and files, file numbers, file names, code sequences. Your black ops secret militaries use all kinds of ranks and files and code names and secret names similar to what Ashtar and Ashtar Sharan stands for in its equivalency to answer your question. Thank you, Source Creator, for answering these questions, and I appreciate your time and kindness. You are most welcome, Ileana. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you, Source Creator.